In a real way, I don't feel I can teach anyone anything. Students learn the material by virtue of their own actions, but what I can do is facilitate that process if I can present material in an interesting, organized, and hopefully enthusiastic way such that students are um, motivated to become active and participants in their own advancement. One of the things that's a challenge for both students and instructors alike is to engage one another in some form of activity that makes it less of a lecture and more of an interaction. A well-prepared, well-presented lecture will almost always generate questions. And then as questions are generated, students realize that I'm eager to hear questions and interact with them. And then if I shift gears from the didactic to the Socratic approach, then they are ready to be prompted for questions from me and they're more likely to be willing to answer. And if I'm diligent in the use of those methods, what can happen is students start to become active part of their own education and take as their own the material that I'm presenting. He really wants you to get into, you know, what he's teaching. It's more than just, you know, um, uh, structure relates to function. It's rather he'll say, you know, look at this, look at, you know, how the adrenal gland is formed and look at what it's releasing. You know, it's important to understand that. Teaching is an area where one has an amazing opportunity to have a positive influence on people. How often in society does someone have the chance to meet three times a week with 120 people and engage in intellectual discourse about a particular topic? It's an opportunity that is basically unparalleled, and I take it as an obligation, given that opportunity, to do it to the highest level that I can possibly do it. Imagine a species where individuals have a given body size, and the body size of members of the competing species is 10 times the first species body size. How many individuals of the first species would it take to equal one individual of the second. The second's ten times larger. We'd need how many of the smaller species to equal a one individual of the larger species in terms of resource use? Ten. Right. If he's going to focus on a particular aspect on the test, he's, he's going to cover that a little more in the lecture. His teaching methods, tying in with his testing methods, go very well together. I tell all my students in all my classes that from my perspective, the purpose of the exam is not to evaluate their performance. Instead, the primary function is to guide their studying effectively toward comprehension of the material. If students, and in general, people can realize that by preparing for the exam, if one develops comprehension, then one will do well on the exam. The exam becomes less threatening, and one can use the exam structure to study the material toward comprehension. He's so enthusiastic and he's so excited to teach everyone things and to explain things that he knows to his students and I think that really sets him apart from anyone that I've ever had for any lecture. I enjoy the material so much that it is fun for me and rewarding for me to try to convey the incredible beauty and interesting, curious nature of biological systems. It's not only fulfilling, it's exhilarating to know that students are doing well toward their own goals, in part because I would like to help them. That's a feeling that's unparalleled in my experience.